Hello, I'm Greg Pollock, and you're watching the 17th episode of the Scaling Rails screencast series sponsored by New Relic. This is the first of two episodes where we're going to be taking a look at how to scale your database. Now, a few of the techniques we're going to go over are MySQL database specific, but most of them you can apply to any database you might be using, whether it's Postgres, Oracle, or say, SQL Server. In this first episode, we're going to be taking a look at how to scale your database step by step, followed by a look into replication, how to do that whole master-slave replication thing with your database, and then we'll be looking at other uses of replication besides just scaling your Rails app. We're going to start off this screencast with a simple example. So here's a Rails app we just deployed in production, and we're running it on a single VPS. So our Rails app is running on the same VPS as our database, and that might work because we're not getting much traffic. But of course, hopefully we're monitoring the application using New Relic RPM. We're using this information to figure out where our Rails application might be slow, and then hopefully we're using some of the techniques that you learned in previous screencasts about how to properly do caching. So we've done as much caching as we can, but our database is still getting overloaded. So what do we do from here? Well, one thing we might do immediately is split out the Rails application from the database. So now we've got them both on separate VPSs, so they're not competing for resources. Now, if our database is still getting overloaded, the next step might be to finally tune the configuration settings on our database. And if you're using MySQL, there's some great information about how to do this on the MySQL performance blog. These guys write some great blog articles about how to tweak these configuration settings to get the most out of your MySQL database. The guys who run the MySQL performance blog work for a company called Percona, and Percona actually has their own version of MySQL which you can run. This version contains some additional patches which gives you better performance and more control over the configuration options for your MySQL database. This is actually being used by the guys over at Engine Yard and 37signals. So now that we've optimized the performance of our database process, what can we do from there to scale? Well, let's see, we've got two VPSs here. One way we could get even more database power is by upgrading that VPS. This type of scaling is called vertical scaling because we're upgrading existing systems. Right? Following this scaling strategy, if we needed to upgrade the database even to a bigger VPS, we might even just give it its own box. But at this point, we can't really scale any further vertically. All we have left to do is to scale horizontally by adding more boxes, which is what we're about to do by adding a slave database. What a slave database means is that any data that gets put onto the master, whether it, you know, it, you're writing data or updating data, it's going to get automatically replicated, copied to the slave database. And one way we could scale our Rails app is by sending all of the writes to our master database and all of the reads to our slave. Setting up database replication is actually pretty easy, and with MySQL it's only a few steps. First we create a user for the replication, then we set up the master database, set up the slave database, copy all the data from the master to the slave, probably by doing a MySQL dump, and then lastly we just start the slave going. I'm obviously not going to go over, you know, little technical details, but the MySQL documentation is actually really useful for getting this done. So check it out if you want to give it a try. Now that we have our master database and our slave database, we need some way to tell our Rails application to send all the writes to the master and all the reads to the slave. And that's where the plugin called Masochism comes in, initially created by Rick Olson. You can get it through this uh, GitHub account right here. But I also noticed last time I took a look that Mislav has been working on his own branch that seemed a little bit more up to date. You might want to check that out too. It's just a two-step process for getting our Rails application running with our master and slave. First, we edit our database.yaml file to tell it this is where the master database is, this is where the slave database is. And then secondly, we have to add this line of code somewhere, either in our application.rb or an environment.rb, which tells Active Record to use this database proxy. Once we have that configured and everything going with replication, well, that's about it. We can start running our Rails app using replication, and now we can get much more throughput with our database. As I was making the screencast, I decided to put together some benchmarks so I could see firsthand the types of performance increases you could get out of a Rails app using replication. So I created a, you know, a dummy Rails app that had authentication, that did a lot of writes and a lot of reads on a single request, had the whole login thing, um, really simulated users as best as I could to see how much throughput I could get. So I kept all the response times below 500 milliseconds to, you know, get a good response time for my users. And without replication, 
I was able to get 13.4 responses per second. Then I went ahead and configured on two different boxes, the MySQL replication going on with a master and a slave. And with the slave, I got a pretty good performance boost, almost two times as fast for, you know, all of my users on the system. Went up to 25.4 requests per second. So it's a pretty good performance boost by just adding a slave database. What happens at this point, though, if our database needs to scale out even further? Well, if our application is read heavy, meaning we need to be able to do more select statements at the same time, then we can simply add another slave database and set up replication from the master to that slave and let our Rails app read from either of the slaves. This type of scaling is called horizontal scaling because we're adding new hardware, right? So we're adding completely new boxes probably here, okay? Rather than vertical scaling where we're simply upgrading the existing hardware. One thing you might be concerned about with replication is how fast is it really? Is it simply sending SQL from the master database to the slave database? And how can that be too fast? Well, it turns out that it's not really sending SQL. It's actually sending binary from the master to the slave, which makes it really fast, ludicrous speed, <laughs> right? And basically, if you took a look and you tried to time it, if you've got two databases that are really close on the network, one update is going to take 0.2 milliseconds or 0.0002 seconds. So it's really quick. One drawback that I found using the masochism plugin is that it only supports one slave. And at first I thought this was kind of frustrating. Well, I want to add multiple slaves so that my application, which is read heavy, can read to all my slaves. What I eventually realized is that if your application is big enough that you need multiple databases, odds are you're going to have multiple front-end servers as well. So here I might have two front-end servers, and the first front-end server reads to the first slave, the second reads to the second slave, and each of these might have different database YAMLs to configure them. So in this case, I could use masochism. A good example of a website that might want multiple slaves because it's very read-heavy is something like Wikipedia. There's a lot of select statements going on here whenever it has to construct a page. As I was putting together the screencast, I was lucky enough to talk to the guys from 37 Signals and Engine Yard, and it turns out they rarely use replication for scaling. Seriously. So what do they use it for? Well, there's a couple other uses for replication which we're going to be going over now. First, we can use it for fallback. If something ever happens to our master server and it goes away, well, we can simply change the slave configuration so it becomes the master point our Rails application at that, and then spawn up a completely new slave database. Now because your slave database keeps an exact copy of your master database, you may be tempted to think of it as a backup, right? Why should I have to do additional backups? I've got the slave database, which is a copy, which is wrong. You still need to be doing backups, and here's why. Both of these databases might get corrupted if, say, something happens. Somebody runs a weird query that does something funky. Um, you also, you know, can fall victim to SQL errors. You have somebody in your system that accidentally runs delete table from posts. Well, that's going to replicate really quick, and both of your databases aren't going to have any posts anymore. It's not like you can be sitting there and go, oh, look, it's a bad query. Stop the replication immediately. All right? That's, that's not going to work because, remember, you've got like 0 .002 seconds to stop it in time. So you're still going to need to back up your database, and your slave database is actually a good place to do it, because sometimes backups can be CPU intensive. How might you back up your database? Well, you could use MySQL dump, you could do an LVM snapshot, which is just like a file system snapshot. Um, you could do a hot backup, which allows you to actually copy your database while it's running pretty quickly. Um, and then there's also an application called Extra Backup, which is an open source solution by those guys over on the MySQL Performance blog, which allows you to do a hot backup. Another good use for your slave databases are for running analytics or reports. I used to work for a company called mp3.com over in San Diego, and well, they had a team of guys that basically had some electronic consumer management system that would run all sorts of analytical queries to pull users, to pull email addresses, run reports, and they were pretty database intensive queries. Well, we put them on the slave databases because they're not going to be updating any data, and that took all the load off of our master databases. Another good use for your slave database is for any sort of background jobs. 
Over at Basecamp, for instance, they have this ability where you can export all the information in your Basecamp account, which might be a lot if you have a big Basecamp account. So when you ask for that, well, it sends a request to their slave database to collect all of your data, either in XML or HTML format, and then package that up. You know, that way they can keep that load off of their, you know, live servers. Aside from running some of these background jobs on their slave database, I was surprised to find out that Basecamp doesn't use the replication that we talked about earlier, where all the reads go to the slaves and all the writes go to their master. All of their reads and their writes go to the same database. It's a big database. Turns out their database box has 8 CPU cores, 128 gigabytes of RAM, 15 15,000 RPM hard drives running RAID 10 with 7 drives in use and one for hot swap. So that's their database box. That's all that it does. <laughs> and it turns out most of the database that they run there ends up in that big chunk of memory. And we're going to talk about how you can do that too in the next screencast. Looks like we've reached the end of the Scaling Your Database screencast. We went over how to scale your database step by step, scale it vertically by adding more hardware, and scale it horizontally by adding, say, master-slave databases. And lastly, we looked at different uses for replication. In part two, we're going to be taking a look at the different MySQL storage engines and looking at how we can scale our writes. Because what we looked at here in this screencast is really how to scale your reads by adding additional slave databases. But how do you scale your writes? Well, you've got two options. You can either use master-master replication, or you can shag your database, which we'll be talking about next. Thank you for watching this screencast, and don't forget to install New Relic RPM in production so you can figure out when exactly you do need to scale your database.